And now, uh, if there are no further comments on this introductory section, I think Matthew is planning to present an overview of Siani activities in 2015 and being... 2014. Oh, okay. That's right, we can't move ahead till we hear what they say. Oh, that's smart. Okay, the overview of what we've done in 2014, and these publications and reports are available on the website. Great. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Matthew Fielding, and I'm the communications manager for Ciani. Um, what we're going to do now is try to condense everything that happened in 2014 into a 10-minute presentation. So excuse me if I skip over a few of the more finer details, but everything I say here can be backed up with factual evidence if you need that. Uh, so first of all, I, I wanted to start with the uh, outputs from last year's annual meeting, uh, we created these very two very attractive uh, visualizations of what were the main findings from our roundtable dialogues. Um, these were, this, this first one we did was, we asked the question that was discussed amongst the tables, how can we develop and sustain our network collaboration? And some of the answers were, as the top there, try to branch out outside of academia, using social media. And we've, uh, we did a, a little review of this uh, earlier on in the week, and we found out that we could actually justifiably tick off six of those that we've achieved throughout the year. Uh, and I'm very happy with that. We also asked the question, what future work topics should be raised in the Siani network? Uh, and of course, Siani doesn't just focus on uh, food security and nutrition. Uh, directly, we also take in a number of other issues that are surrounding that. And uh, through our painstaking research, we realized that we'd actually organized events or had uh, themes or expert groups on seven of those as well. Uh, so you can see that the work we do in this room today does directly go into our work plans that we uh, carry out throughout the year. And so the ideas that do come up here, we can't have 100% success, but we will really try our best to integrate it. And a lot of that comes from the suggestions and the participation of the members and partner organizations themselves. So some of these major activities from last year in no particular order, uh, first of all was the at Almadalen, uh, we had the uh, food waste and losses event, which was very successful on CEDAR's stage there. Uh, we also then took some of the, the outcomes and the, the major findings from that and organized an event at the CFS in, in Rome, at the FAO, where we organized our collaboration-led waste reduction from uh, producer to consumer, which was a side event there. Uh, on a slightly different topic, we looked at sustainable frontier landscapes. This was at the Global Landscapes Forum in Lima, uh, kind of a massive side event to the Climate Corp that they had. We also looked at responsible agricultural investments, securing forest and community land rights, uh, insects as fodder, I believe that word is translated as. Um, Agriculture for Development Workshop, looking at agriculture, nutrition, and health, which specifically focused, also tried to incorporate youth into this. And of course, we supported World Food Day celebrations here in Sweden as well. Uh, but it wasn't just activities. We also reported from the EAT Forum, where we wrote three blogs on our website. We had another two blogs from the Food Security, Mapping Risks, and Building Resilience event at Chatham House in the UK. We blogged also from the uh, Building Resilience for Food and Nutrition Security at IFPRI in Kenya, Ethiopia. Uh, the World Forestry Congress, we produced three briefs uh, and three blogs. Some of those you'll see on the door as you, as you came in, you can take one. We blogged from the uh, World Agroforestry Congress, as I said, the Global Water for Food Conference, Share Fair in, in Kenya as well and also the Insects to Feed the World event in Wageningen. Produced a, po uh, a policy brief, a bite-sized, two-sided policy brief of the Montpellier report, produced by one of our members in the room. Uh, a discussion brief on food security in the SDGs, and also a journal article with Siani members looking at 
academic research, does academic research on food security reduce the yield gap? Paraphrase a little bit. Uh, but how can Siani be so productive? How can a secretariat of just four people, none of whom are working full time, do all of this? Well, the answer is we don't. Siani itself is a network made up of the members that we have in this room. We don't call this the members meeting because it's not exclusively members. We like to welcome in new people as well, so we just call it the annual meeting. But we also have our expert groups, which you'll see here, on a variety of topics. These are selected in a competitive process, uh, and we have another uh, and decided upon by the steering committee, who's represented in the room here. Um, and these run for one year initially, looking at a range of topics, and you'll hear about some of them later on today, looking at uh, food security, energy access, urban animals, um, restoration in rural landscapes. But it's not only expert groups, we also have two themes. This was a new, uh, a new branching out of Siani last year. We have one theme, the Sustainable Agricultural Production for Food Security, hosted at SLU Global and the forest landscapes and food security hosted with Focalia at GMV in Gothenburg. And again, these are our partners who are working in collaboration with the Secretariat to extract information from these uh, silos or from these uh, avenues, and we're trying to it, it drag them into the Siani network to distribute them and, and bring them up in global fora and also in publications and create new ways of, of digesting these types of information. Um, so what does that lead to? Well, it leads to a website that is growing massively year on year. This year we have over, averaged over 500 new unique visitors every month to the website per month, 500 new ones in 2014. Of the people that fill in their ages in their browser, which I imagine is it's kind of self-selecting because I imagine maybe people between 25 and 34 do fill in that information and people older don't. Uh, was the most popular age range. 45% female users of the people that filled in that information. Mm -hmm. And then on the website, on our own Siani website, where you can become a member, although we're very, very open and very, very democratic, so becoming a member it enables you to receive the newsletter and things like that. But of the signed up members, we passed the 1,000 mark last year, 1,092 signed up members. Uh, and for those of you that tweet or on Twitter, we passed both the 1,000 mark and the 1,500 mark last year as well, which is really good. And, and what were these people looking at? Well, I can tell you the most popular content, top of the pile, for the third year running was our Africa land grabs brief. Please, can somebody update this? It needs updating drastically. <laughs> but it's still the most popular thing we have on our website. That's an open invitation for somebody to come up and <laughs> write a new one. The, from 2014, the Forest Tenure Seminar was the second most popular thing there. A award-winning blog we had on a, a weekend rice farmer from in Thailand, who is now a full-time rice farmer due to the success of her uh, rice farming. World Food Day, and then the Responsible Agricultural Investments. They were the top five uh, pieces of content on our website. Um, and also what was quite interesting as I was browsing all these statistics is looking at the countries that people come from. Now these, you don't need to fill in. This is kind of spyware that's in all of your browsers. So you kind of reveal this information even without having to click a button. But what's interesting is that low-income countries, we've actually had now three low-income countries have come up the rankings in 2014. India, Thailand, and Kenya, four, five, and six. That's where we get a lot of our, the fourth most, uh, the fourth most popular country, no, the fourth, fourth most visited country from that. Hits coming, Hits coming from countries. <laughs> India was the fourth most popular. The fourth, no, it's not most popular, is it? No. <laughs> Surely someone can help me. Fourth most, uh, anyway. This is the whole site. And so India, Thailand, and Kenya are right up there. Right up there. Sweden, US, UK, and India. I mean, that's fantastic. I mean, it's part of our core uh, goals and what we're trying to achieve is this not only informing the Swedish network, but also our partners in these other countries. So to see these shoot up the, the website hits rankings is fantastic. Uh, however, we couldn't be perfect. We only managed to get visitors from 189 countries. 
And according to Google, which is the reference uh, body these days, there are 195 countries on Earth. Uh, so that means we're missing six. So I'll, I'll leave you with this note. If you are going to visit Western Sahara, Mauritania, Cuba, Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, or Turkmenistan in this year, try and get somebody to sign up as a Siani member. And then go on the internet and come onto our website. Okay, thank you very much.